I'm digital artist Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'll teach you how to live stream on YouTube. I'll start by showing you how to set up live streaming on your computer, and then I'll walk you through your first live stream. Live streaming is a great way to get new fans interested in your work and engage with your current audience. It also racks up a lot of YouTube watch time, which is good for your channel. I create live paintings during my live streams, so this tutorial will be geared towards digital artists, but you can apply most of the lessons in this video to live streaming games, traditional art, or just about anything else. If you're live streaming on Twitch, this tutorial will still be helpful. So let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, you'll need a YouTube account and a YouTube channel. This is my channel here, youtube.com slash Aaron Rutten. If you need help creating a YouTube channel, I have a tutorial you can watch on that. Once your channel has been created, you'll want to click up here in the top right on your icon for your channel. And you'll want to make sure that you select your channel here and go to Creator Studio. Or if you're already on your channel page, you can click on Video Manager. Once you're in your Creator Studio, you'll want to look over here on the left for the Live Streaming tab and click on that. And this is where you can access all of the live streaming features available to you on YouTube. So right now I'm in the Stream Now beta, and this is kind of the quick version of live streaming. I would recommend using this when you're a little more comfortable with how live streaming works. For now, what we're going to do is we're going to focus more on events. And events let you plan a live stream ahead of time so you can, for example, pick a particular date in the future. And you also get the option to make your stream private. So if you want to do your first live stream without anybody seeing it, that might be a good idea. I'm going to go ahead and choose private for my stream because I don't want people to be able to see it. And I'm just going to put in a title. I'll call this test stream. The time doesn't really matter. If we look over here under stream type, there's quick using Google Hangouts on air or custom, which gives you more encoding options. We're going to want to make sure we choose custom. But if you wanted to do something like a quick interview, you could choose the quick option. And that'll basically just set up a Google Hangout with you and someone else or multiple people. But you don't have as many options for sharing your screen and things like that. So we're going to go ahead and select custom for this. You may also want to read the rules for live streaming because you're only allowed to stream things that you have licensed to you or that you own, meaning that you can't have music playing in the background like stuff on the radio or MP3s. Go ahead and click learn more to learn more about that. Because if you violate copyright, your videos can get taken down and you can have strikes against your YouTube channel, which means that you won't be able to have a channel or upload videos or live stream. Let's go ahead and move on over to the advanced settings because there's some helpful stuff in here. For example, you can turn live chat on and off. You can promote the live stream through your featured content on your channel or on your channel page. And you have a few options here for when you want to promote it. You can enable age restriction. You can choose a category. You can choose a language for the video. And you have the option to automatically make the archive of your video unlisted once the stream is ended. So basically what's going to happen is while you're live streaming, it's going to be recorded and that recording will be available on YouTube if you want it to be. If you don't want it to be available or you want to take some time to edit the video before people can watch it, you'll want to make sure that you automatically make the archive unlisted. And that'll make sure that people won't be able to see it on your channel until you make it public. If we scroll down, there's also an option for DVR, and that means that viewers will be able to rewind a maximum of four hours while you're live streaming. So if somebody comes in at the middle of the live stream, they can go back in time and watch what happened and then fast forward back to the current point in the live stream. And there's some options for stream optimization. I usually keep this at optimized for less viewer buffering. Buffering refers to that annoying pause that happens when you're watching a video because the video hasn't loaded completely or you can optimize for interaction low latency. So that would mean that there'd be less of a delay between what you do and what the viewers see. Let's scroll back up and let's look under monetization. Monetization means that you can show ads on your video and generate revenue through the videos. You have to be set up for monetization on YouTube for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave monetize with ads on, and then I'm going to create the event. Now here you can add a thumbnail. I'm not gonna do that quite yet. I'm going to choose basic ingestion, and then we can choose a bitrate. I like to use 1080p because that's a good high resolution. If you have a slow internet connection, you might want to lower this to 720p. If you have a high resolution stream or you're going to stream in 4K, then you would want to choose this option up here for 1440. So I'm going to go ahead and choose 1080p, and that's suggesting that I use a bitrate of 3000 to 6000. So I'm going to keep that in mind. I'm going to want to remember that later. You can also enable 60 frames per second. We'll take a look at that later. And then I'm going to choose my encoder. 
and I'm going to select other encoders. If you want to look at the recommended settings for the encoder, you can check that out here, but I'll go ahead and walk you through that. Down here we have the stream name, the primary server URL, and the backup server URL. You'll just need to copy and paste these a little bit later, so let's just keep this window open. I'm just going to jump back over to my live streaming tab here and look under stream now, and I just want to show you a few more resources in case you get stuck. Let's look over here in the live streaming checklist and let's click on setup encoding software. That's going to bring up this page here and this will tell you all about how live streaming works. So if you need more details on anything that I go over in this tutorial, you can always look at that here. I'm going to scroll on down to the bottom here and let's look under other encoders because we're going to need to download this particular file here for open broadcast software. That'll take you to this page and you'll want to download OBS Studio, that's Open Broadcaster Software, which is free and open source, so it doesn't cost anything and it works really well. You'll want to choose the version if you're using Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. I'm using Windows, so I'll download that and install it. So hopefully by now you have OBS Studio installed. If you do, we can move on to the next step, which will be configuring OBS for live streaming. All right, so I've gone ahead and launched OBS. And don't worry if it looks a little intimidating at first. I'm going to walk you through every single step here to get this set up. And once it's set up, you really won't have to configure very much to be able to live stream. So let's go ahead and go down here to the bottom right and let's click on settings. There isn't really anything here in the general panel that we need to change right now. So let's move on over to stream. We want to make sure that we choose streaming services for our stream type. And then we want to choose our service. If you're using Twitch, you could select Twitch, but I'm going to be using YouTube slash YouTube Gaming. You want to make sure server is set to primary YouTube ingest server. And then stream key, we're going to need to come back to this later. But this is where you would input your stream key if you were doing an event live stream or a quick live stream. The quick live stream will have the same stream key all the time. Your event stream key can vary. So make sure to remember that the stream key is very important when you're live streaming. We can move on down to output. Now remember earlier I mentioned you wanted to remember that video bitrate of 3000 to 6000. We got that from the YouTube help page here. So right now it's set to 2500 and YouTube recommends 3000 to 6000. So what should we really set it to? I recommend that you go to an internet speed testing website like speedtest.net and go ahead and run the test. So in this particular test I got 41 megs for my download speed and I got 6 megs for my upload speed. So we could set this as high as 6,000K because there's a thousand kilobytes in a megabyte, but we don't necessarily need to set it to 6,000. 6,000 would be the maximum. That's if you want the absolute maximum video quality for that range. And at a certain point, the quality is gonna be good enough. So all this is really gonna do is just eat up more of your bandwidth and eat up more of your computer processing power and more hard drive space if you're gonna archive the video. So I would recommend setting it lower than the maximum. I keep this set at around 4,000 and I think my live streams look pretty good. Since I'm doing mainly drawing on screen and there isn't a lot of motion in the video, I can get away with a lower bit rate. So you can feel free to experiment with this. If you find that your live streams are a little laggy and that they start and stop a lot while people are watching them, you may wanna set this a bit lower, especially if you have a slow internet connection. If you find that even the lower end of this doesn't work and your live stream is still laggy, you may want to use a different resolution and go with something lower like 720 rather than 1080. The encoder we want to set to x264. The audio bitrate, YouTube recommends we set this to 128. If you wanted higher quality audio, you could set it a little bit higher if you wanted to, but again, that eats up more bandwidth. The recording path is where we're going to record our archived videos to, so you can record an offline copy at the same time as your live stream. So this is the location of where you want that file to go. Recording quality we can change if you want it to be the same as the stream or you can make it high quality, lossless quality and so on. I'm just going to leave this same as stream. The recording format I'm going to change. I prefer the MP4 format. So that's it for the output page. Let's go on down to audio. Audio is very important to get right because otherwise people won't be able to hear you. We want the sample rate to be set to 41.4. I'll let you choose whether you want stereo or mono. Mono is going to save you a little bit of bandwidth and file space, and it's going to sound just fine if it's just people talking. If you're going to have music and sound effects and a lot of other stuff, you may want it to be set to stereo. 
Now the desktop audio device one and two, this is just your system sound. So that's anything playing on your computer. If your computer plays a sound when you get an email or if you're listening to music or a YouTube video or you're talking with somebody on Skype or Google Hangouts, anything that's playing through your speakers is going to be a desktop audio device. So I like to keep the first desktop audio device at its default. The second one can be disabled. And then the mic slash auxiliary audio device is your microphone that will be capturing your voice while you're speaking. So you'll wanna set this to whatever your sound card or your audio device is on your computer. And that should be the only other option besides disabled and default, unless you have multiple audio sources. So I'm using an M-Audio Firewire Solo audio input box, which I connect my microphone to, and then that connects to my computer through Firewire. They also make them for USB. And I'm gonna select this line one, two. That's basically selecting that as my microphone. Now I don't have multiple microphones, so I'm gonna leave these disabled. And then that's everything we need to set in audio. Let's look at video. Now you have your base or your canvas resolution. This big black area would be your canvas. So that would be the maximum size of your composition. Now you have the option to scale that down when you live stream. So you could record it very large and very detailed, but then stream it at a slightly smaller size if you wanted to, to make it run a bit faster and then scale it up to that size. Now that sounds really complicated. So long story short, I would recommend that you just set both of these to the same thing. So I'm gonna set both of them to 1920 by 1080 because that's the resolution that I wanna use for my live stream and for my recording. You don't need to worry about downscale filter and then you can change your FPS or your frames per second here. I think 30 is fine for what I'm doing, but if you had a lot of really quick motion in your videos, you might wanna use 60 frames per second. But again, increasing the frames per second increases the demand on your computer and eats up your bandwidth, which could make your live stream slower. So you wanna keep that in mind for all of these settings. Don't set things too high because that's gonna make the live stream more laggy. Don't set them too low because then the quality of the video will suffer. Now, hotkeys I'm not gonna get into, but I just wanna to touch on what hotkeys can do. You can program these hotkeys to do anything. You can start the stream, stop the stream. You can switch to a different scene. You can mute your microphone. You can do all kinds of things. So this might be helpful when you get a little more in depth into using the live stream. Let's go to advanced. You'll want to make sure that automatically reconnect is enabled. That way, in case you lose your connection for a second, it'll automatically reconnect and it won't stop your live stream. So now we want to go ahead and click apply to apply our changes, and then we can click OK. So I know that seemed really complicated, but the good news is that work is done and you won't ever have to configure it again unless you reinstall OBS. Fortunately, you can save your preferences here. You can save profiles and you can save collections of scenes. So I would recommend doing that if you want to back up these settings for later so you don't have to re-input them. Now before we move forward with setting up our scene or building our composition for our live stream here, I want to talk a little bit about the hardware and the software that you might want to use for your live stream. For example, you're going to need a microphone if you want to be able to talk during your live streams. The best microphone to get is a condenser microphone. If you'd like a recommendation, I'm using the Audio-Technica AT4040. You can watch my review of that. Now this particular microphone requires that you have an audio input box. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm using the M-Audio Firewire input box, but you could use any audio input that allows you to connect an XLR microphone. If you don't wanna mess around with all that extra equipment, you can get condenser microphones that are powered through USB. The Rode NT and the Rode Podcaster are examples of that. And if you're interested, I'll put links to all of these products that I'm suggesting in the description of this video. Moving on to the webcam, if you want to be able to be seen during your live stream, you're going to need a webcam. And I recommend that you get the Logitech C920 because that's really one of the best webcams. It has 1080 HD resolution. One of the most important pieces of hardware are headphones. You need headphones because if you're planning on having system sound playing like music, sound effects, or audio from your guests, you don't want that audio to come out through your speakers and go back into your microphone because that'll create a feedback or an echo and it'll make your live stream impossible to listen to. So you wanna plug in headphones or mute your system audio to make sure that you don't get audio feedback. If you're gonna be doing digital painting during your live streams, you're gonna of course want some art software. I use a variety of art software during my live streams. 
And last but not least, you'll probably want more than one monitor because if you're gonna have your content that you're sharing on your screen, you'll probably want that to be full screen. So if you're gonna wanna have the chat log open or your YouTube live dashboard open or anything else open, you're gonna wanna put that on a different screen than the screen that you're recording. So I have three screens that I can use and that gives me plenty of room to do my live stream. But if you wanna keep things simple, you can get away with live streaming on just one screen. It's just a little more difficult.